We, Benedictine Oblates of St. Margaret Archabbey, are Christians united by the holy rule of St. Benedict. We come together in chapters to support one another and strengthen our spiritual life. Hi, I'm Brother Joel. And I'm Brother Colby. And you're listening to Echoes from the Bell Tower. Stories of wit and wisdom from Benedictine monks who live, work, and pray in southern Indiana. The podcast episodes we've been working on all revolve around St. Meinrad's outreach in the world. Some of the episodes go along with stories in the 2018 Annual Report of Stewardship. St. Meinrad impacts the world in many ways, from educating men and women for ministry to monks serving in parishes and giving retreats. Today, we want to focus on the Benedictine Oblates of St. Meinrad. Some of our listeners are Oblates. Hello, thanks for listening. And some of our listeners have never heard of an Oblate before. We talked to Becky Boyle and Nina Castronova, who are Oblates in Bloomington, Indiana, and to Brother Stanley Rother Wagner, who serves as the Oblate Novice Mentor, to find out what it means to be an Oblate of St. Meinrad. Um, an Oblate is someone who has a heart and a desire to know God in a very unique and special way. Oblates are monastic that live uh, in the world. It's a lay person, someone who has a connection to St. Meinrad Archabbey and a commitment to Benedictine spirituality. An oblate is all of those things a man or a woman who wants to deepen their relationship with God according to the rule of St. Benedict. They become affiliated with a specific Benedictine community, like St. Meinrad, and share a spiritual union and friendship with the monks. Here's St. Meinrad's Oblate Director, Janice Stopp. Oblates are not, you know, spectacularly holy people. They're just ordinary people who are seeking God and seeking a way to God that is balanced and attainable. It's a way of seeking God that allows for mistakes. And that means everybody can be an oblate. Oblates are many different denominations and don't have to be Roman Catholic. They're just people who want to live their daily lives by the Benedictine traditions of praying the Liturgy of the Hours, reading the Rule of St. Benedict, doing Lectio Divina or spiritual reading. And by following this lifestyle, oblates become more aware of God's presence in their lives. Being an oblate is in many ways very unremarkable. There's, you know, no special garb that you wear. You don't put any initials after your name. Uh, It's something that's very quiet. And yet, uh, it's something that changes your life forever. Oblates pattern their own lives after the lives of the monks. As you can imagine, there are some elements of the monk's life that are easier to mirror than others. So for me, I'm taking the sense of balance that they have and applying it to my life. I'm taking sensibilities that they have uh, about hospitality. I'm taking the rhythm of, of having prayer times throughout the day. I'm taking the importance of contemplation, uh, Lexio Divina, and plugging that into the life I'm leading in the world. I can't do that the way they can do it, but I can take bits and pieces of that life and make it real in my life. Being an oblate is supposed to enhance the life you have and to make you a better person in your vocation. When I first came to St. Meinrad, Father Justin said to me, you are not here to become a little monklet. You are here because you want to be a better wife and a better mother. And that made sense to me. Becoming an oblate is not a light decision. Following the lifestyle of a monk completely changes the balance and pace of life. People who want to become oblates spend a year as novices. During that year, they read and respond to novice lessons once a month and learn how to apply the Benedictine values to their own lives. We try to make it very clear to people entering the novitiate that they're not just joining a prayer group, that um, this isn't a club that 
puts them closer to the monks in the monastery, but that it is, in fact, a way of life. May we learn to prefer nothing to the love of Christ. After a year, they decide if the life of an oblate is for them. Some people decide it's not, and others go on to make their final oblation and officially become oblates of St. Meinrad. Charles, Keith, Sean, Virginia. Do you wish to be enrolled as a Benedictine oblate novice of St. Meinrad or Jack? I do. May God bring to completion the good work begun in you today. At the final oblation ceremony, Oblates promise stability of heart, fidelity to the spirit of the monastic life, and obedience to the will of God. I, Richard Vincent Grady, promise before God and all the saints, as my state and life permits, stability of heart, fidelity to the spirit of the monastic life, and obedience to the will of God, as an oblate of the venerable monastery of St. Michael. After oblation, St. Meinrad becomes their spiritual home. Being an oblate of St. Meinrad means that they're an extension of our community out in the world. So we need the oblates, and the oblates need us. I don't think there's any way to overestimate the role of the, the house that you are affiliated with. We pray for them and for ongoing vocations, and they pray for us. And there's nothing that's more important than that in a relationship. The Oblates for us monks provide a very tangible link to the world. They live in the world and they pray for us in the world. Indeed, their, their most important role is to pray for our monastic community, but they also, through their good zeal, manifest all the good that we do here. The monastic community serves as models for the Oblates on how St. Benedict calls us to live, but that education goes both ways. Here's Brother Stanley. The thing that I enjoy most about working with our oblates is that I learn from them. I obviously learn from my brothers here in the monastery. But it's interesting to see how a monastic takes on living the Benedictine way of life in the world. And I think that that's one of the great things about the Oblates is that they are members of this community. And as community, we all learn from each other and we all grow in that love and progressing on our way toward Christ. We're very blessed to have Brother James, Brother James the Greater, as I understand it, who will be talking to us today about accountability, which is our theme for the year. So we've seen him before and we're happy to see him again. Take it away, Brian. So accountability, I want to kind of break it up and talk about uh, the first part of it, kind of introduce accountability from the rule of St. Benedict and talk about the four kinds of monks from chapter one of the rule. And then I'll Some people become oblates because they want to grow in their faith. Some are looking for balance or peace in their lives. Becky Boyle was drawn to the community aspect of being an oblate. There are oblate chapters spread across the United States that provide a community of like-minded people although you don't have to be a member of a chapter to be an oblate. Monks are assigned to chapters and attend meetings to teach about different aspects of Benedictine spirituality, like how we just heard Brother James talking about accountability. Becky is a member of the Bloomington, Indiana chapter, and she serves as one of the chapter coordinators. Bloomington chapter, awesome, awesome community. Um, we are a very busy, vibrant, and alive chapter. Um, people have lots of ideas. It's a very caring community. It's, it's amazing. Becky has been an oblate for two years. Before becoming an oblate, she always went to Mass and was active in her parish, and she hosted a Bible study in her home for five years, but she still felt that something was missing. You know, that I've always had a heart for knowing God in a special way. Um, as I became an adult and I had my own children, 
something else was clicking in me. And so I tried things like Bible studies. Um, I would go to conferences and conventions, just trying to connect with like-minded and like-hearted people. You know, I so desired and I thought God wanted me to be in a community, you know, small, large, whatever, but he wanted me to connect with other people in that way. One day, Becky was telling her faith story to an oblate, and at this point, she didn't know anything about oblates. And so she's like, oh, you should try oblates. It's great. It's wonderful. And so I just kind of let that set and resonate for about a year or so. And then um, I saw this person again, and I was like, so what was that you were talking about? Becky was given some information about the program and was invited to one of the chapter meetings at the parish. And just right away, I knew, like as soon as soon as I was there, as soon as I was with these other people, some whom I knew from our parish, many who I had never met before, even that it felt in a way like I was home. So that's when I knew. Being an oblate has brought a sense of peace and settlement to Becky's heart, that feeling of home. Home to me is at 4.30 in the morning when I'm praying lauds by myself um, in my family room. I am at home with my oblate community because I know someone else somewhere is also praying what I'm praying. And I don't necessarily have to be physically present with my oblate community to know I have a family in that community. Being a member of a chapter also creates a support system for Becky. There's a group of like-minded people who can hold her accountable and offer support when she needs it. Sometimes you just don't feel it, you know, or sometimes you're kind of down and you're low and it's just not clicking for you. Well, you've got this community to go to that helps build you up so that you can get back out there and do what, what God wants you to do. And, and that's pretty special. Being an oblate and praying the Liturgy of the Hours also helps Becky support others in her life and work as a public school teacher. Just I can't tell you how many times a day that word, especially, you know, my morning prayers, how that will come back to me in my day and my interactions with my students. Um, you know, some of my best friends work with me at the school where I teach. Not all of them are believers. And even those who are, you know, they, they're on a journey just like I am and we struggle together. And I feel like I'm a source of um, support and encouragement for them. And I feel like the more that I understand and study and apply the rule and the more, you know, I'm praying and, um, taking the scripture to heart, the more I'm able to be that for other people. So Nina Castronova and her husband, Ted are both oblates of the Bloomington chapter. Ted is also one of the chapter coordinators with Becky. Here's Nina. Right. Yeah, it's it's really amazing because I think it's helped us to grow both individually in our spiritual life, but I feel like we've grown as a couple spiritually as well. So we, we, we each do it in our own way. So I think he really gravitates towards the prayer and um, the reflection and Lexio Divina. And I think for me, um, I really value like the notions of hospitality and humility, and that's sort of the piece that um, is most meaningful to me. For Nina, the rule of St. Benedict and the monastic community have taught her to go through daily tasks without grumbling. And so that's really helped me because I might think, oh gosh, I don't want to drive kids around another night for four hours or cook dinner or do this laundry and those things if I think of them more as an offering and a vocation and a prayer, then I tend to grumble less. The rule of St. Benedict helps all of us to see the sacredness of ordinary life. All those small little details of everyday life can become a prayer or an offering for God. Here's Janice. If I can invest every moment of every day 
with an understanding that uh, baking a loaf of bread or making dinner or doing the laundry, um, making the beds, you know, that all of those are, are holy activities when we look at them through the eyes of obedience and humility. Those are all ways that oblation um, changes the way you approach life. And so uh, I think that it makes the ordinary life that I live uh, something truly beautiful. We've seen how being an oblate can impact individuals. It can also make a positive contribution to the community that you live in. The Bloomington Oblate chapter is impacting their community in several ways. Here's Becky again. We find a deeper understanding for our faith and a connection with each other through prayer and work. So as Oblates, we're a praying community and a working community. Or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. They have a special care basket that they put together for the oblates who are sick or shut in. They offer vespers every Wednesday evening at St. Charles Borromeo Parish in Bloomington. I thank you for the wonders of my being, for the wonders of They also participated in the St. Minor Day of Service back in March. They worked with a local organization to help feed the homeless. What else do we do? We do a lot. Oh, this is also a relatively new one bread, one cup here at St. Minrad. Wow, what about we connect youth with oblates? This past summer, Nina brought a group of youth to St. Minrad for the one bread, one cup liturgical leadership conference. The Oblate chapter sponsored and covered the tuition costs for one of the high schoolers. Here's Nina again. So yeah, so we sponsored one, and I was just, I was very touched by the Oblate's um, generosity and thoughtfulness, yeah, um, to do this. Uh, And it was somebody who might not have otherwise been able to come, so it was really a good deed. Through sponsoring a youth and bringing a group down to OBOC, Nina is hoping young Catholics in the Bloomington community will become connected to St. Minard and to Benedictine spirituality. So when I think about the Benedictine values and the sort of core of Ora at Labora, work and pray, I'm seeing these kids in this week working and praying every day. It's really beautiful to watch. If I'm getting to know somebody, one of the most important ways that we do that is by sort of saying, hi. I'm Father Christian. I'm from St. Minoret. And uh, my favorite word in French is parapluie, right? So I'm I'm sharing things about myself. This is how you're, this is how my friend is getting to know me because I'm sharing about myself, right? So when we say that Jesus is the word of God, what do we mean? They're also experiencing like true hospitality, which I think is wonderful. It also introduces them to the beauty of the Liturgy of the Hours. Um, A lot of them are hearing chant for the first time, so that's really wonderful, and just getting a a glimpse of monastic life. So um, I'm certain that this uh, this is an opportunity, a way of life that they had not experienced before. Being an oblate and living the life of a monk out in the secular world can change a person for the better. People find peace, a spiritual home, happiness, and a connectedness to God and His will in their lives. They also find a community of people who share the same values. If those Benedictine values make us better people, then living them out in a world which does not always share those same values can make it a better place. Then St. Meinrad really has done something remarkable for the world. And the world needs people who are kind people who reflect uh, rather than react, people who open their hearts in hospitality. Uh, And I think that 
if we can do those things, we become the light of St. Meinrad wherever we find ourselves. So I think our role is to be that. It's to be St. Meinrad in the world, wherever we live, and whomever we're with. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for listening to our episode today about the Benedictine Oblates of St. Meinrad. If you want to learn more about the Oblates, check out their website at stmeinrad.org slash oblates. This episode was edited and produced by Krista Hall with help of Brother Joel Blaze, Brother Colby Wolnikowski, Mary Jean Schumacher, Jim Paquette, Tammy Sheeter, and Christian Mozek. The music for this podcast was written and produced by Brother Joel. A special thanks goes to Brother Stanley Rother Wagner, Janice Dopp, Becky Boyle, Nina Castronova, and all of the Oblates of the Bloomington chapter who let us record audio during one of their recent meetings. Stay tuned for more episodes about St. Meinrad's outreach in the world. If you've enjoyed Echoes from the Bell Tower, tell your friends and subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to listen to past episodes or learn more about our podcast, visit stmeinrad.edu slash echoes. If you're looking for another Catholic podcast that focuses on storytelling, check out the USCCB's Made for Love podcast. You can find it in iTunes under USCCB Clips. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I do. It's actually really good. Is it really? Yeah, I, I have to start listening to it later. Janice promised me that I could have the chapter that goes to the moon. So I thought that was pretty nice of her. What? No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the moon chapter. No, you get the Mars chapter. Oh, okay. <laughs>